Atmospheric pollution has always existed on Earth. Particulates and gases have been poured into the air from natural sources since prehistoric times. A natural disaster of epic proportions originating in outer space is said to have wiped out entire species by blocking the sun for hundreds of years. Ever since man started to use fire to protect himself from his environment, he has been artificially polluting the atmosphere. Until around 150 years ago, such artificial pollution was insignificant in global terms, but with the onset of the Industrial Revolution, signs of man's effect on his surroundings were beginning to be seen and felt. The early factory owners appeared to recognise the detrimental effects of their activities by building their fine houses at a discreet distance from their satanic mills. Occupational diseases began to develop, but were simply accepted as a way of life, the price to pay for a standard of living above the poverty line. The wake-up call, which predicted the disastrous effects of gaseous and particulate pollution in the UK, came when death tolls started mounting alarmingly during periods of impenetrable urban fog. An Act of Parliament declaring smoke-free zones in the 1950s was one of the first signs of official awareness of what has become a global time bomb. The difference between early industrial pollution and today's situation is that almost everyone is aware that there is a problem. Even the inhabitants of the remotest atoll in the Pacific Ocean know that without global controls, in time, their homes will disappear under rising sea levels. Children in primary schools learn more about greenhouse gases than their times tables today. combat the problems of particulate and gaseous air pollution, the first essential is for proper identification of the sources, amounts and content. Without this knowledge, very little can be done effectively to stabilise the situation. Envirotechnology Services was one of the first companies ever to recognise the need for proper monitoring of air pollution in order to identify and heighten awareness of the major sources of man-made pollution. The company's headquarters in Stroud, Gloucestershire has its own comprehensive monitoring station providing public access to local pollution levels at airqualitydata.com. Envirotechnology's factory is the centre for a worldwide service organisation and a custom systems engineering facility. The company has a staff of specialists with long-term service records, providing reassuring continuity for customers. An equally long association with brand leader manufacturers ensures the provision of state-of-the-art systems. The systems manufacture and service engineering exceed all international standards, which are regularly checked by external authorities. Each component of every system has full traceability documentation. There is an in-depth commitment to servicing at Envirotechnology which places extreme importance on regular engineering training, both for its own employees and customers' engineers. Structured courses on hardware and software are held regularly at Envirotechnology's Gloucestershire headquarters. If man is to succeed in the fight to reduce global pollution, Envirotechnology will rightly claim to have contributed significantly to that success. <laughs> <laughs>